What's up? It's been a while. It's good to give an update. And uh, just wanted to make an update video uh, about what's been going on for a while and to give a testimony um, of God's amazing grace and provision for me and my family. And hopefully it'd be an encouragement to other people out there. Um, so I haven't been making videos for a while because I've been extremely, extremely busy. Uh, one of the things I've been busy with is trying to find a place to live. Um, cause the place I was in, I was renting a townhouse, uh, for a while. It was like a, a year lease. And, um, af you know, about halfway through the lease, the landlord said that they were actually going to be moving back in to our place. Um, and so we weren't going to be able to give, any, we weren't going to be given an, an extension to go another six months till the spring or something. He said we had to be out because they were moving back in. So I started looking for places and it got real slim. It got really hard. Um, it was hard to find anything affordable unless you want to pay over $2,000 a month, which I did not want to do, uh, to rent or to buy. Uh, at first I was looking at rentals for a while. Uh, and then I started looking at houses to buy, even though I didn't really want to buy now, kind of wanted to wait a little bit. And, uh, it was just insane. And, um, we went all over the place, all over the Southern part of the state, uh, within 45 minutes to an hour and there was nothing. And I was just looking every spare minute that I had, I was looking at places to live. And, um, you know, it, uh, it was crazy. And, and every time we would go to a place, there would be either something wrong with the place because the pictures were deceiving or we'd go in a place and like 10 other people would come in and bid, outbid us and stuff. And, and then with the houses, there was, all, there was all kinds of crazy stuff. Like pictures can be very, very deceiving on uh, online. Wow. You get there and it looks like a totally different house. Um, some of the houses we, we came to looked like they should be condemned. It was, it was insane. But anyways, uh, it was doing this for a couple months and then actually ended up getting a real estate agent to help me look and look at houses to buy and all this stuff. And, and we found a bunch of times we'd like go to look at a house and, um, we were like, Oh man, we like this. And then someone come in and with a better offer, or there'd be something wrong where we shouldn't buy it. And it just kept happening over and over and over again. And, um, uh, you know, all throughout this time, it was very trying, you know, it was a trial. Uh, because as time went on, it was getting closer and closer. And, and then I was like, okay, now we're down to 30 days until we have to leave. Until the lease is up and we have to get, to get out of our house. And uh, so that was getting real stressful, <laughs> not having a place to live. And, but you know, throughout the whole time, I'm just praying and praying and praying to God asking for him to, to show us where to live, what we should do. And I was asking over and over again and just going to places and nothing, 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 nothing. And I'm just like, what is going on? You know? And sometimes you're just like, I never, you know, got mad at God or anything. I just didn't know what he wanted me to do. So I kept asking and, you know, uh, it just makes you to trust the Lord no matter what and walk by faith, not by sight. And I mean, that's one of the biggest lessons that I've gotten through this and other trials. But, you know, this was one of the greatest trials of my life because in addition to uh, having to find a place to live, my wife also had uh, was pregnant with our next child. And so we were getting ready for that. And, and, and basically, we had to be out of the house, the, the, the townhouse, the lease was up. Then the baby was due like three weeks after that. That's how close we were cutting it. So it was just everything pile on, piling on top of me. And uh, so really brought you, me to my limit. And, uh, but in the end, it really helped. So anyways, um, you know, trying to find places, looking all over. And I'm like, man, I can't find anything. This is just insane. And so then the 30 day mark came 30 days left to get out. And I still hadn't found anything. And then I'm looking three weeks left, two weeks left, still nothing, two weeks left to get that. We have to be out. No exceptions, no extensions. You have to be out. <laughs> and we had nothing. 
And so every time I had a spare moment after work on the all weekend, during the weekdays, at night, driving 45 minutes just to look at a house and, and literally sometimes I'd drive 45 minutes, go inside a house and go, nope, not get, within the first 30 seconds, I'm like, yep, this house isn't gonna work because it was just so bad. And, and then go, okay, thanks, and walk around and go home. Yeah, did that a bunch of times. So within the, the last two weeks, I mean, we were just like, what are we gonna do? And then it gets really down to the wire, and I'm like, you know what? They're, I'm like, we're just gonna have to go farther out. And I'm like, I'm going an hour west of where we're at. I'm like, I don't care. We have to find something. Maybe we shouldn't be in this area that we're at right now. Maybe that's what that's what God is showing us. We need to get out of this area. And so that's what I did. And I looked, and I found a couple houses about an hour west, and about a week and a half before we had to be out. I finally found this place. I was like, uh, I'm like, all right, is this still available? Sure, let's go check it out. It was a house for rent. Looked like it had a nice yard and all kinds of stuff. So I drove out there and we looked at everything and we're like, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with this house. It looks great. It's got plenty of room in the house. It's it's in good condition. It's a little bit of an older uh, house, but it's uh, but it was a full house you know, like, and, uh, and, and a big yard too, and, and, and surrounded by woods. And it was just, it was crazy. And it wasn't really expensive either. And I was like, man, this is, this is crazy. So, you know, it was about, yeah, it was about, um, man, it, it, it was, it was almost like a, a week. Yeah. It was like a week and a half before we had to be out. So then we, we're like, okay, this looks good. And then, but the problem was the landlord was on vacation in Canada. <laughs> so we're like <laughs> trying to get everything in there, get the paperwork, get the application, all that stuff in there. And then finally, uh, you know, <laughs> cutting, cutting down to the wire, we go back and, and he's talking back and forth with them. And I'm like, I'm like, can we get in there? Can we confirm it? And the, it was working through a realtor and he said, you know, give the deposit. And we had it locked down probably five days, probably five days before we had to be out. Five days before our lease was up and we had to be moved out of our place. God provided us this place. And not only did he provide us a place just in the nick of time, also, he applied, uh, uh, gave us a place that was better than any house that we looked at to buy or rent and is better than any house that we have ever lived in, ever. Praise the Lord for that. Amazing. And that's not all. <laughs> and that wasn't the end of the trial. So we, 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 you know, and one of the things that we learned from that is not only to trust God no matter what, walk by faith, not by sight, you can't just say, well, you can't just walk by sight and look and, and go, uh, <laughs> you know, well, there's 30 days left. There, you know, there's two weeks left and there's nowhere to live. Then, well, I guess God's not going to provide for us anything and we're just going to end up on the street or go, when you know, have to move in somewhere we, should, we don't want to or something crazy in a, in a crack head neighborhood, you know? But you can't think that. <laughs> you have to trust God no matter what. And so that's what we did. And praise God, it, it's amazing how he delivered us and provided for us. So, but anyways, that wasn't the end of it. Then after that, after we get that all done, get moved, <laughs> then the day of the move comes, right? <laughs> and I had a, reserved a Penske truck for rental. And, and to move the house. And in the morning of the move, they call me. And by the way, they said this was going to be like $2,000 to rent this. You know, and you're like, well, how could it be so expensive? Because if you do a one-way move where you pick the truck up somewhere, drive an hour, and then you don't drive the truck back to return it, it's way more money. Which I wanted to do because I didn't want to have to deal with coming all the way back and all this stuff. But anyways, they come in the morning of, of the move and they said, you know, 
Uh, sorry, there's been a problem with the truck. Something broke, and we're going to have to have you pick it up at a different place, you know, 20 minutes in a different place, location. I'm like, okay, whatever. And he's like, hey, I think I could save you some money, too, while we're doing this. Let me check this up. And he's like, oh, man, you're going to love this. He's like, would you be willing to return the truck back here, I'm like, to save money? He's like, I could save you probably over $1,000. I'm like, oh, yeah, if I'll save that much money, sure, I'll consider doing it. And he's like, let me see what you do. And he's like, oh. You're going to be real happy about this. He's like, if you bring it back, you know, I'd have to drive out where I, um, an hour out to where I'm moving, drop off all the stuff, then the next day, drive the truck an hour back, drop it off, drive back. If I did that, he's like, it won't be $2,000, it'll be like $500. And I was like, yes, absolutely, I will do that. <laughs> I will save $1,500. So God just poof, dropped that right in my lap and saved me that much money. And it ended up actually being like 400 and something dollars. Yeah, way, way cheaper. And God provided that. And that's not all. And then after that, okay, now that we're all moved in, praise the Lord is amazing. He provided all the stuff. He got us in here safely. He got all that done. Now what? Well, now I have to wait for, now, now I'm expecting a baby to come. And we're having our fourth child, right? Well, so we're getting ready for that. And uh, we were, you know, trying to figure out what we're going to do. And there's a hospital nearby, 15 minutes to, from us now. And we decided, well, we're just going we're just gonna to go here. We're going to have the baby here. And um, so finally gets closer to the baby coming, closer to the, to the date. She starts going past her due date. And we're kind of, you know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then finally, it was like she was starting to feel some contractions. She goes into the hospital. And we're like, oh, we're just going to get a checkup, see how it's going. Well, we go in there. We thought it was going to be a checkup for a couple, you know, a little bit and then come home. Well, she started having contractions in there. They said, let's monitor you for a couple hours. And then after that, they're like, we consider you pretty much in labor now. We're going to keep you here. So we're like, okay, let's cool. Let's do it. So time goes on, labor gets more intense, and we're there for a while, we're get, it's getting late, she starts pushing, baby's not coming out, pushing for a while, and the baby's not coming out, so we're like, okay, and then, and then finally, after pushing for a while, the doctor comes in and says, um, the OB says, I, because there's been no progress, I'm going to recommend that you have a C-section and you know my wife didn't really she didn't uh, fight it she wasn't really worried about it she knew that she wasn't making progress and said okay and um, so the um, so we said okay let's do it and um, she went got prepared had the surgery had C-section and out came a brand new baby daughter and she was healthy, perfectly fine. My wife was perfectly fine through the surgery, after healing, everything. And God gave us that baby. And we're very, very thankful for that. And, um, you know, that baby wasn't coming out. That baby wasn't coming out. And we, we, we said, you know what, let's, let's just do it. And so God provided that. And uh, I'm just... After all this, it's been a whirlwind for a few months, <laughs> an absolute whirlwind. Uh, plus, you know, other things going on in my life, just crazy. But th those are the main things that have been going on. So that's, that's kind of why I haven't been making very many videos. I had a lot more going on <laughs> that I had to focus on. But uh, so I just wanted to make this video as sort of um, just to give an update, but also as an encouragement and as a testimony to the amazing providence of God, how God provides for his children. And let me just say this, God has provided for me all the way since I've been saved for years and years and years and years. Okay. I've been saved for nine years now and God has always provided for me, provided for me in miraculous ways. And here is no different. Again, this trial was one of the most, if not the most trying, uh, uh, crazy trial I've been through in my life. 
you know? And, um, but God delivered us out of it and he strengthened my faith and our faith more than ever, you know? And one of the points I'd like to make is that, you know, I'd like to, a, a few things. I'd like to say, if you're, if you're saved, that God will always, always provide for you. But he's not going to always do it in the way that you want. And he's not going to always do it when you want, the way that you want. Okay? And you have to know that. And a lot of times it may happen right at the line. Right at the last moment, he'll come through, he'll provide for you. And it doesn't matter what it is, a place to live, a baby, some money. It doesn't matter what it is that your need is. God knows what it is. He hasn't forgotten about you. You know, as the Bible says, he takes care of the, the sparrow, the birds. He clothes the lilies. He does all this stuff and he's not going to take care of you. Of course he is. Of course he is. You just need to believe the word of God, stand upon the promises of the Bible no matter what. And that will sustain you. That is the only thing that will sustain you. That is the only thing that sustained me through these trials is the word of God. That's it. I'm praying. and But what am I praying? I'm praying the promises of the word of God. They go together. Praying and the Bible. Okay? Pillars of the Christian life. And, and God will always provide for you. You have to trust that. And another thing I want to say is when it comes to trials, okay, your faith, God does not grow your faith except with trials. God uses trials to grow your faith. And another thing uh, to, to add to that is that God is never just going to keep giving you the same level of trials, okay? Think about it like this. David, when he was a young shepherd boy, he defeated, he killed a lion and a bear to protect the flock of sheep, right? But that wasn't all he did the rest of his life. And he just kept fighting bears and sheep. I'm sorry, bears and sheep. Bears and lions. He didn't continue to just do that for the rest of his life, right? The trial of him fighting the bear and the lion prepared him to fight Goliath in front of two armies. When all the army of Israel and even the king of Israel were afraid and they were being cowards for this young boy to stand up and say, is there not a cause? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God and get down there and go fight that giant? He couldn't have fought Goliath if he didn't defeat the bear and the lion first and build up to that, okay? You can't build your faith on the trials of yesterday, okay? God gives you a trial, strengthens your faith, gives you another stronger trial, strengthens your faith even more and keeps building and building and building. And the stronger the trials you go through, the stronger your faith is going to be when you come out the other side. As Job said, after he's tried me, I shall come forth as gold. He knew. After Job lost all his children, all his animals, his money, he had boils, he lost everything. But he knew, in the end, God would do him right. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And here's the thing. Always remember this, when you're going through trials, it's so much less than you deserve. You deserve hell. I deserve hell. We all deserve the wrath of God. Anything less than an eternity of burning in hell is better than we deserve. Better. If we get all our, our, our limbs chopped off, and someone shoots us in, in the body, whatever happens, we could lose everything in our life, all our money, all our family, everything happens. It's still better than burning in the lake of fire for all of eternity. Still better than that. Pretty much actually anything that you could think of that could happen in this world that's temporary is better than burning in hell for all of eternity. So let me tell you something. <laughs> God is faithful. God is so incredibly merciful 
and gracious and faithful. He always comes through with his promises. He always fulfills them. He always keeps his promises. He is always faithful to keep them. And he will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you can see. If you don't think you're going to have a place to live, if you don't have any money in your bank account, if you don't know what you're going to do, God is faithful and he will come through for you. And it's your job to trust him, to pray, to ask. And the Bible says you have not because you ask not. He's not going to answer your prayer if you're not even praying. He's not going to just give you something. You need to pray. And then he says, you, you ask and receive not because you ask it amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. God's not going to give you something that you pray for if it's just something that you want. He doesn't want to give you your wants. And I want a Lamborghini and I want this and I want some junk that you're just going to waste your life with. No, he's going to answer your prayer if it's something according to his will, something that you need. Something that's going to help you build your character make you more conformed to the image of the Son of God, to Jesus Christ. That's the kind of prayer he wants to answer and to help you with. And that's what you need. So I just want to, 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 to give you guys this testimony to tell you that God is always faithful. Always faithful. And even if you don't know where you're going to live up until one week of having to move somewhere, even if you don't know if your baby or your wife is going to survive a birth, God is faithful. And he will give you the grace that you need to go through something. And that could be something bad happening or something good. God didn't have to give me a place like this to live. He didn't have to give my wife survive the birth or the baby or anything else. He doesn't have to. All could have went bad, but he would give me the grace I need to endure those trials. And what my responsibility is to do is to do what is right no matter what. It's the same thing when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Hebrew children in the book of Daniel, were faced with their trial, and Nebuchadnezzar said, bow down to the statue when I play the music. And they said, no. We're not going to. So he said, okay, turn that furnace up seven times hotter than normal. And he was angry. And they said, listen, King Nebuchadnezzar, God is able to deliver us. He can. But if he chooses not to deliver us, we're still not going to bow. We're still not going to bow to your idol. We're going to serve God. If he deliver us, delivers us from the furnace, or we get thrown in and we die and we burn alive, we're not going to do wrong. We're not going to serve false gods. We're not going to sin against God. We're going to do right. And he said, okay. Boop, threw him in the furnace. And what happened? I saw one, a fourth man in the fire, like unto the Son of God. Jesus Christ was with them in the fire. And let me tell you something, if you're in the fire right now, if you're in the fiery furnace of affliction, you're going through trials and tribulations and you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know how you're going to get through it, <coughs> that's good because you can't get through it yourself. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, for without me, ye can do nothing. Nothing. You can't do it without Jesus. You need to pray to him every day. You need to read the word of God. Not just read it, study it, meditate upon it, speak it, believe it, trust the promises of the word of God. You need to sing in your heart, make a melody in your heart unto the Lord, singing unto yourself psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You need to know that he is there with you through that trial. And you need to know also that those trials are not for your destruction, they're for your benefit. 
And God doesn't chasten you because he hates you, because he wants to smash you into the ground, because he wants to hurt you. It's because he is trying to make you grow to be more conformed to the image of the Son of God. That's why God is putting you through these trials. Okay? He's helping you. Submit to him and his will and see what is going on through those trials and say, okay, what is God trying to do here to help me? What do I need to learn? What is the deficiency in my faith that, I, that needs to be worked on? And, and then you will see and you will grow. And if you have the attitude right now that you accept and settle it in your heart that the Christian life is filled with trials, tribulations, afflictions. The Bible says that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. It says that we are appointed to afflictions. Okay? If you settle it in your heart and you know that that's what the Christian life consists of, is going through trial, deliver, maybe a little bit of a rest, another trials, other trials, and then you continue to go through them all the way till you die or Jesus returns, that's what it is. <clears throat> it's not the Joel Osteen best life now. Okay? And that's why we might go through trials and tribulations here, but when we get to heaven, that's when we rest. That's when we have peace, joy, and love like we've never experienced before. And God shall wipe away every tear from our eye. And there will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying ever again. But for now, we must endure. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay, thank you for listening today. And, uh... Praise God. To God be the glory for everything. He, he provides for me. He provided for me. He delivered me through all these trials. He helped me. And he can do the same thing for you. Just trust him. Just believe the, the book. The King James Bible. That's it. It's all you got to do. Believe that. Sounds simple, right? But it's hard for a lot of people. It's very hard. But it's that simple. Believe that book. Okay? So, that's the testimony and encouragement for you. And uh, as far as update and, and the future goes, you know, now that I'm past some of that stuff, um, I am, you know, planning on making more videos, more sermons and radio shows. Sound the Battle Cry is not done. I still have more of those, plenty more of those to go. Um, a lot of ideas for that. Man, I know a lot's been going on, but, um, you know, so hopefully I'll have some of that coming soon, and, uh, and um, just stay tuned for that, okay? And, and in the meantime, please go back, check out the old videos, recommend them to other people, like them, share them, uh, spread it around. If you got any questions, just let me know in the comments or send me an email, tradingservants at hotmail.com. Send me a question. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. God bless. See you later.